Welcome to the Biker Angle, your news source for everything going on in the biker community. We now added timestamps to the video, so if you want to hear a particular story, all you have to do is click on it in the description box. We've got it listed, timestamps and everything. Hit the timestamps, you go right to it. Again, also, we just got our support store up and running, so go over there and check it out. Link again is in the description box. Got some killer t-shirts over there, especially the come get it one. Elliot Williams, police have arrested a man with possible links to the Comancheros after a man was allegedly held at gunpoint, abducted and dumped in a remote location in NSW. Matthew Ender, 30 years old, pleaded not guilty to six charges, including assault, wielding a baseball bat, unlawful confinement, and making threats to kill. Police allege Mr. Ender assaulted and threatened to kill the man at a Sharnwood home before driving him to a house in Melba and assaulting him again. Uh -oh. The alleged victim was then held at gunpoint, taken to a car, and driven across the border into NSW and dumped in an isolated area, police say. Mr. Ender allegedly made demands of the man and repeatedly threatened to kill him. Well, I think that was already established earlier, but you can repeat it, mainstream media. Police raided a Sharnwood home on Tuesday afternoon, leading to Mr. Ender's arrest. Mr. Ender did not apply for bail and was remanded in custody. His matter will return to court in September. That from Australia. Now we got a good one coming up. According to uh, All Time uh, TV, they got a list of the five best biker movies, and we'll have to see if we agree. People love to watch films about subjects that interest them. For motorcycle enthusiasts, this would include films about motorcycles. Well, you think so, Mr. Wizard? There are some great examples of motorcycle films in almost all genres of film. From comedy to action and from sports dramas to biographical f movies. <laughs> this is a lead up. Therefore, there are films for motorcycle fans to enjoy regardless of their gender preference. Motorcycles make a great subject for film storylines as they can add elements of danger, suspense, and action. Well, just ask Kurt Sutter about that. He just turned the whole biker world upside down with that one. They can also be used for impressive stunts or to contribute to storylines that involve traveling to different locations. There are hundreds of motorcycle films that you can choose to watch. And which is the best is a matter of personal preference. However... The following are five of the best motorcycle films in many people's opinions. <laughs> Wait till you hear these. <laughs> Number five. If your preference is for comedy movies that feature motorcycles, <laughs> then Wild Hogs is right up there with the best to watch. Released in 2007, Biker or Wild Hogs is a biker comedy road film. It was written by Brad Copeland and directed by Walt Becker. This film boasts an all-star cast list as the main characters were played by John Travolta, Tim Allen, Martin Lawrence, William H. Macy, Ray Liotta, and Marissa Tomei. The film is about a group of middle-aged men with boring lives who like to meet up at the weekend to ride motorcycles as a way of adding some adventure <laughs> into their routines. 
they decided to take a road trip and they find themselves in some tricky but comical situations. Wild Hogs was both critically and commercially successful. Well, of course, them people doing uh, movie things would think so. From a budget of $60 million, this film grossed $253.6 million at the worldwide box office. Holy cow, Fred. Four, written by Charles B. Griffith and Peter Bodonovich, the latter of whom was unaccredited. This outlaw biker film was released in 1966. It was directed and produced by Roger Corman. It is credited at the film that led Peter Fonda's association with Harley Davidson motorcycles as he starred in the lead role of this film. The movie also starred Nancy Sinatra, Bruce Dern, and Diane Ladd. It is about a biker gang who drives across the desert to Mecca, California in search of a stolen motorcycle. In addition to the bike riding scenes, there are also some exciting fight scenes in this movie. Considering the film was made on a limited budget of just $360,000, it did very well at the box office, grossing $15,541,000. This was a significant amount of money for a film to make back in 1966. In fact, The Wild Angels was the 16th highest grossing film that year. Number three, according to IMDB, The Motorcycle Diaries is one of the best motorcycle films to watch. Released in 2004, this film was written by Jose Rivera and directed by Walter Salis. It is a bio-epic based on the written memoirs of Erno Nesto Guiviera, who later became known as Shea. The film covers an adventurous road trip that he took in 1952 when he biked across South America with a friend. Although this is a biker road movie, it is also considered a coming-of-age film. The film was received well critically, and when it premiered at the 2004 Film uh, Festival for Sundance, it received a standing ovation. It also achieved a reasonably level of commercial success as it grossed $57 million. The film went on to win multiple awards for various aspects of its development including awards for Best Actor, Best Director, and Best Song. This movie was released in the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Argentina, and Chile. Multinational right there, man. It just said it. <laughs> anyway, number two, Ranker List Easy Rider as one of the top motorcycle movies. This 1969 independent road drama film has become a cult classic in terms of motorcycle movies. It was directed by Dennis Hopper, who also co-wrote the film with Peter Fonda and Terry Southern. Furthermore, Hopper and Fonda also starred in the film alongside Jack Nicholson. It is a about a pair of bikers who travel across the southwest of America carrying the proceeds of a drug deal. <laughs> oh, the film was acclaimed for exploring societal landscapes, topical issues, and tensions in the 1960s America. It was also praised for the directing, writing, performances, soundtrack, and visuals. Easy Rider was also a commercial success as it grossed $60 million at the worldwide box office from a budget of just $400,000. In 1998, 
Easy Rider was added to the Library of Congress National Film Registry. Everybody has to know about Easy Riders, man. And the number one film of the list. In top position on the list of the best motorcycle films by BIFI Film Forever is a wild one. Many people consider this film, which was released in 1253, <laughs> 1953, you dummies, <laughs> as the original outlaw biker film. Uh, it covers an, out, uh, an American outlaw motorcycle gang violence uh, theme with Marlon Brando's character, Johnny Stribler. This character became a cultural icon of the 1950s. The screenplay was written by John Paxton and Ben Maddow, based on a short story by Frank Rooney. The movie was directed by Lazio Benedict and produced by Stanley Kramer. Alongside Brandon, the film starred Mary Murphy and Robert Keith. The film is based on the sensationalized coverage of a, for, a rally on 4th of July weekend that got out of hand. This became known as the Hollister Riot. And the images of the riot that appeared in the media included a stage photograph of a drunken man on a motorcycle. Yeah, that's the famous one everybody knows in the biker world. It was on this legend that the original short story was based. In general, this film was well received by critics. It was also a commercial success and it received several accolades from the American Film Institute. And that rounds up your top five. Let me know in the description box which one you like or which one you think's the best. The Hildado County Sheriff's Office arrested Matthew Sepvida on Tuesday morning for allegedly sexually assaulting a suspect in custody, according to jail records. Uh-oh. On Monday, the agency announced an, in an investigation into alleged official oppression at the Progresso Police Department following an incident of officer misconduct. That's him right there. The Sheriff's Office responded to the department Saturday, June 29th, the same day jail records list as his offense date, according to a news release. Progresso Police Chief Alberto Rodriguez said he cannot comment about the investigation, nor would he confirm that Matthew was employed with the department. Wonder why? Hmm. Public offices again, man. The Progressive Times, however, reported that Rodriguez said he fired the suspect last week. So he can't comment, but he fires him. Don't get it. Sergeant Frank Medrano with the Sheriff's Office confirmed Tuesday that Matthew had been employed as a progressive or progresso police officer. <sniffs> Gotta get the story straight, guys. Uh, he was also previously employed at the county jail, earning a promotion to sergeant, according to a Sheriff's Facebook post from November 15th, 2017. The Sheriff's Office is leading the investigation with the assistance of the FBI, or better known as Forever Bother Italians, according to authorities. Matthew stands charged with one count of sexual assault and one count of violating the civil rights of a person in custody. The latter charge lists the additional qualifier of sexual jail records show. Bond has not been set as of noon. <laughs>